Welcome back to Saturday Agenda. Tyree Nichols' funeral is held on Wednesday at a church in Memphis, Tennessee. Nichols, an African-American young man who was brutally beaten by multiple black officers on January 7th. He died in the hospital three days later on January 10th. The body cam footage was released last week, leading to riots and protests all over the country. Joining me now is distinguished professor at Turo University, Thane Rosenbaum. We're also joined by constitutional law attorney Amir Benno. Thane, I want to start with you. Let's talk about the charges to these officers in the case. Were these the appropriate charges, in your opinion, as to what you saw from that body cam footage? So, John, it's actually interesting. You know, there's second degree murder, uh, aggravated assault, and then aggravated kidnapping, and then official misconduct and official. Uh, oppression. The one that the last three are unusual, very unusual, especially kidnapping. Because kidnapping, if you think about it, means that you're depriving someone of their liberty when the, you have no right to do so, which means they're saying that the detention itself, stopping him, for the traffic stop and the detention was illegal and it was a crime. But you know, Supreme Court precedent in this country has always permitted the police to ask you questions, to stop you, to pat you down, especially in a high crime neighborhood. So that, that's a very you know, unusual, unprecedented charging, I think, to charge the police with kidnapping. And if they go forward with this and they ultimately convict them of kidnapping, it's gonna make a huge difference of how policing is done around the country because police officers are gonna think that if we stop you and we can't ultimately prove that you've done something illegal like stolen a car or have unlicensed firearms or drugs, uh, we could actually be, have committed a crime called kidnapping, aggravated kidnapping. So I think that itself is very unusual. The second degree murder is not surprising or the second degree or rather the aggravated assault, but kidnapping uh, is certainly the one that is the outlier of the five charges. Amir, I want to ask you about this because the so-called Scorpion unit is supposed to be an elite street crime aggressive unit. And in this instance, they're conducting a routine traffic stop. And there's also an aspect of this that the officers are in plain clothes. So they're not necessarily in uniforms uh, that would indicate maybe to somebody that they're pulling over that maybe without showing the badge or something that how does that factor into this case? Well, these are all right, Amir froze for a second. Thane, I'm going to let you pick this one up while we try to get Amir's signal back. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, see, you can watch shows like you know, perce police procedurals like Chicago PD. You know, what we're learning is that the days of, of, of giving uh, a, a lot of latitude and leeway in high crime neighborhoods is obviously coming to an end, which is very concerning. The idea with the Scorpion Union was specifically to deal to saturate high crime neighborhoods with an elite tip of the spear group of police that would go after, especially in these high crime neighborhoods. Who wants that kind of a job, right? And so the whole point of being in plain, plain, uh, plain clothes, which is what you see on shows like Chicago PD, they're all in plain clothes, is because by wearing regular clothes, they'll be able to infiltrate uh, some or prevent some kind of criminal activity. But now we're being told that precisely because they're in plain clothes, people had no idea who they were and that they came up in these big muscle cars without police sirens, and everyone started running because they were scared of these guys not knowing they were the police. Now, we don't know how true that is, but that is an interesting way of looking at that, that if you're an African-American male, you could be frightened of someone in, who is not announcing themselves as a police person not, does not have sirens on their car and is not wearing a uniform. And so that's really what the argument is. But from a police procedural perspective, you're saying, yeah, but that's how we get the bad guys. Yeah. That's the best way to police those kinds of uh, neighborhoods. Uh, Amir, do you expect that there'll be any more charges coming? Will there be charges added at, at some point as this trial goes on? 
Well, there could be charges added. There could be new people who are added. Uh, one thing I'll just say to Thane's uh, point about this Scorpion unit, which has been disbanded, which C.J. Uh, Davis, the chief, put together when she came to Memphis uh, after the George Floyd incident. Uh, she was hired by Memphis, and that's one of the first things that she did, and then she disbanded it. Uh, after this incident, is that they're recruiting people who they're having a very hard time. Police departments across the country recruiting people. Um, there's a lot of attrition. People don't want the job uh, for a whole variety of reasons. They're being underfunded. They're being demoralized and demonized. The police, uh, and so they're putting people with less experience on these elite units. And when you have people with less experience uh, who uh, in these units, and they don't have a sergeant or some supervisor accompanying them there. Then you get into these uh, very high, you know, tense in environment situations where they don't have the experience uh, or the composure to be able to address the situation in a more professional way. And that's part of the problem. And it comes down to uh, generally all these different factors uh, with defunding the police, uh, refusing to prosecute. Uh, taking discretion away from judges, uh, ultimately creating a revolving door that is resulting in people not wanting to join the police forces and resulting in people who are more senior with the experience uh, wanting to retire from them. And so we have to solve that problem if we ever hope to, to correct this problem. But these anti-crime units, uh, these plainclothes units, they do serve a good function. They just, you need to have officers there who are able to obviously behave within the bounds of the law. Yeah, that's an interesting point. You know, this is going to play out, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if more charges come, and also what happens there in that Memphis Police Department with uh, the amount of scrutiny that's now seen because of this case. Uh, Thane, uh, Mir, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your, uh, your your insight here today. Thank you both. Thank you.